Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Henry Penix about mental health, wellness, and mindfulness in the workplace. Henry Penix, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. Great to be here. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Oklahoma. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about mental health, wellness, and mindfulness, generally speaking, but also within the workplace. And I'm really excited to have this conversation with you and to be able to explore these important topics together. As we get started, I wanted to share Henry's bio with everybody. Henry Penix is a global entrepreneur, speaker, investor, and advisor. He is the CEO and co-founder of Soak Technologies, offering online services in the mindfulness, mental health, and wellness space. From humble beginnings to successful creations and exits in real estate, the service industry and technology. He is grateful for each step in the process. He has been afforded the opportunity to develop partnerships and friendships with some of the nation's foremost business and political leaders. He has never forgotten his humble roots and enjoys speaking to live young entrepreneurs when possible. He is the current recipient of the National Blue Chip Enterprise Initiative Award, the SBA's Entrepreneur of the Year Award, commendations from the governor of his home state, commendations from the Senate and House of Representatives, an honorary doctorate degree in leadership, and has held membership in the United Nations in U.S. and Europe. It is truly a pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive on into the conversation? No, no. I'm just uh, happy to be here. Well, let's start by framing up a little bit about what you're doing there at Soak Technologies. Again, offering online services and mindfulness, mental health, and wellness in that space. Describe a little bit about what you're doing, and then we can talk more about some of the particulars of of what we can do uh, both for ourselves, for our loved ones, members of our family, but also in the workplace and people who may be part of our teams. Yeah, well, throughout my life, John, I've I've, uh, always had a, a desire to help others. And no matter what entity I've ever been in from I had a a string of schools. We had about 300 employees. I would always teach in my leadership classes that we have the upside down triangle where, you know, usually it's leadership from the top and everything comes from the top to the bottom. I flipped that where everything goes from the bottom up to the top, because if you can't lead by example, I don't feel you can truly leave and be uh, lead and be effective. So I I really love that. I uh, had a technology company that also went around the world. We were in all the Apple stores, all the Best Buy stores, did all this stuff. And, and it, was a, it was a device that actually helped people. So I, I see this pattern in my life, and I, I was reminded by a friend of mine of that pattern, and, and he actually brought it to my attention. He said, Henry, you seem to always want to add value to other people's lives and you know, leading by example, et cetera, et cetera. And so when I came across um, Soap Technologies and, and we you know, started kind of diving into that, looking at what COVID has done to everybody's mental strength Uh, And at the same time, there's almost like a cross-section graph that shows people now coming coming out and talking about their mental health and wellness, where before it was sort of a stigma. Uh, Now you've got Olympia athletes, you've got uh, all of these people coming out and speaking about it, which, as you know, once you become aware of something, uh, you you take the the demons away from it, so to speak. Um, So that's what I've dedicated my life to do. I've, I've seen a lot. I've been around the world. 
My membership in the United Nations was amazing. I, I had a lot of great conversations there. But again, as I stay with my roots of helping people, I think this is one of the most effective things that that I could do right now um, in, in, you know, helping sort of balance how people have went through COVID, the, the world being turned upside down and and all of that in the workplace. And, and I've, I've read a lot of things that you've published and, and been interviewed on. And I'm, I highly respect your opinions, but all of the, the work cultures of, of, you know, the great resignation, people skipping from job to job, it's like there's no stability. So how can we get back to that stability? How can we give people that inner calm that says, you know what, it's going to be okay. Uh, let's fight to, let's live to fight another day. Let's, let's take care of today for what today is and let's worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. So, you know, in line with all of the mindfulness and mental strength and wellness and all of that, that's, that's kind of where I land. Yeah. Great. And can you describe briefly um, for just a moment, we can talk specifically about soap technologies. What, what are some of the the services that are offered? How, how are you helping to facilitate greater levels of mindfulness, mental health and wellness? Uh, and then we can zoom out a little bit and talk, you know, about other mechanisms and uh, other approaches that people can also take. Sure, sure. Well, I, I, uh, we had a clinic. Uh, uh, we ran clinic for about five years, and some of the modalities we used in that clinic to, again, to help people included, uh, you know, massage therapies, IV therapies, uh, sound frequency therapies, uh, all of these different modalities, and and it was growing, and people were, you know, coming in. Uh, by the droves. Uh, and then we decided, you know, in, in our expansion, do we want 500 brick and mortar stores or do we want to try to digitize those offerings? So we looked to see what people were getting the, the most from. And we started to see it kept centering around the mindfulness category and the sound frequencies and what they did to mindfulness and awareness and, you know, what you think about, you bring about. And we saw that we could add those little things, digitize them, digitize the in-clinic experience. And so we did that. We took about two years and, and quite, a bit, quite a bit of funds to, to do that so that people could get that same experience. And, and it turned out fantastic. We, we, uh, we got to where we could, could give our three biggest offerings, which were uh, the, the sound frequencies. And that's, you know, that's a topic of its own. Uh, everything has frequency. Vitamin C has frequency. <clears throat> everything emits a frequency. And when you can identify the frequency that will offset anxiety, depression, low energy, low libido, et cetera, et cetera, and play that to the human cells at a cellular level, when you're, when you're aligned, we think the body is uh, made wonderfully. And we think that when it's aligned and in homeostasis, it can heal itself. You know, we, we weren't created to die. And, and when you can get into that mindset and start applying some of this technology, modern technology to ancient principles, obviously frequencies have been around since time, uh, but when you can combine modern technologies with ancient principles and offer it on a digital platform where people can access it 24 seven globally, we're in 133 countries now, we could have never done that out of our, out of our clinic. Um, so when you, when you get to do that, things start to come in line. So you've got the sound frequencies, you've got the, the mindfulness we call mindful intentions, which are positive affirmations that we send to each of our customers twice daily, just to kind of reset your mind. So, and you can, you can, you know, go, go to the app and find out what part of the day you want to, to receive these mindful intentions. So if you normally have a lull at 10 AM, or you want to get your day started at 8 AM or seven or six or five. You can set that mindful intention to be pushed to your phone, you know, something that we'd never go anywhere without these days um, and, and get something that kind of resets your mind. If you have another lull in the afternoon, uh, you know, two, three o'clock, you're getting ready to get off. It's like your day is packed full or you want to be prepared before you go home with your six kids like you do uh, uh, and, and spend that time with them. Maybe you set it for three o'clock. And it gets you in that state. It, it changes your state so that you're in a great state when you go home. So you can actually separate business and family, um, you know, bringing that balance. So those are the two. The third thing uh, is our 21-day immersion programs. And this is something that, that I would love to talk to you further about. But a 21-day immersion program, we go to some of the best leading global experts and thought leaders on a particular subject. Uh, the other week I did an interview with a gentleman who had one of the top 10 fastest growing banks in the nation. 
I said, how did you do it? Where did you start? How did you do it? How do you uh, value, you know, what are your values? What are your goals? How do you value life? How do you run your employees? I, I take the topic that they're best at, uh, John, and I ask them 21 questions about it. So over those 21 days, they give us a three to four minute um, a recital of why that day we focused on that particular topic with reference to why they're a global expert or a global thought leader. And so we go through 21 days of that. It's like a cliff note of what they do, cliff notes of what they do best in small, short spurts. So people aren't, you know, I'm all for reading, I'm all for educating and all that. But in today's society, we wanted in bites and bits and microwave what used to take four hours to cook our dinner. And, you know, just we want to get it done. We want to get it done fast. So if they can hear those three to four minutes, some, you know, you can always find three or four minutes in your day, whether it's before you eat lunch or after or during, like, or right before you go to bed. And, and at the end of those 21 days, you can learn something that, again, further changes that perception or your mindset about something that's interesting to you. So, uh, that that's been huge. All three of those things come uh, in our digital platform uh, again that we've taken into 133 countries now, and uh, that's that's the fastest I can say those three things. <laughs> As you talked about the deep dive uh, for a particular areas of interest for, for, um, your customers. I think that's, um, something that's really interesting and, and even providing, I, I don't know if this is part of what you do, but providing additional resources if they want to go deeper or dig deeper into a particular piece for the day. Um, but also those, the positive affirmations, uh, that is just so important that people can get into the habit of positive, um, self-talk. And I know that may sound kind of, touchy feely, you know, warm, warm, (laughs) fuzzy, woo, woo, whatever. Um, I get that, but, but it really, the, the, the psychology of this is really important. And the the fact is our self-talk matters. And many of us find ourselves, you know, downward spiraling, especially when things aren't going well, um, that instead of, um, giving ourselves positive affirmations, we start to interpret not only, you know, our self-talk, but we start to interpret all of the things we hear from other people around us in negative ways. And it's really hard to disrupt that. So taking wow. time to pause and reflect and to recenter and to reconsider um, things from a more positive framing is really, really important. It's it, it, frankly, it's an important part of cognitive therapy if people are involved with that. Um, but doing it in this kind of a fashion um, where you're just getting pinged, you know, at various times, like you said, even at where if you know your kind of least productive times or the times where you tend to find yourself in a lull, I think that's that's really powerful. Um, and and everything you just shared, you know, these are the types of things that we can be attentive to and model for our people in our organizations. Or as a dad, I can model it for my children, uh, for my family, um, or any other context you might find yourself in. So not only is it important for me to be able to, you know, foster greater levels of, of, of mental health, mindfulness, wellness, um, so just so I'm, you know, in a better space, uh, but it, it models for my team and it allows me to, to be su- more supportive of them so they can do the same thing. And you start to have these ripple effects that ultimately uh, far extend your reach and your impact of these types of practices. Um, one of the things that I, I know, I've heard many people talk about how frustrated they can get, you know, not only as they are working on this for themselves and trying to practice self-care. Not only is that hard just because people are busy and you're running around. So even if you get committed to do this for yourself, um, then I hear lots of people talk about, well, it, they just feel like selfish. Um, especially, you know, if, if, if you're a leader of a team and you feel like, well, I'm just taking this time on, on myself and therefore, you know, I'm, I'm not investing in my team or as a dad, you know, I might think, oh, if I'm taking some personal, um, time to, to recenter myself that maybe I'm not being there or as present with my children. Um, and, and I get that. And, and I suppose you could take this to an extreme to the point where you're an absentee boss or an absentee parent. Um, but, but honestly, if you want to be a more present boss, a more present parent, I think practicing these types of mindfulness and wellness, uh, and mental health approaches are going to be essential because it will allow you, um, in, in relatively short 
chunks of time to go through this recentering process that then allows you to actually be more present and, and aware and, and be there for your people to be more supportive. You know, you're not drawing from an empty well, um, or the, the, the airline example about the, 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 the oxygen mask, you got to put yours on first before helping other people, whatever kind of example you want to use. Ultimately, we have to be able to do that. And then we're actually in a position to help people more than we could have otherwise. Yeah. Well, first I want to back up just a couple of minutes and say, if you want to look further into uh, the 21 day programs or the mindful intentions, we actually call them deep dives. And when you said, if you want to take a deeper dive, I'm going to save that segment of this program <laughs> and you like you hit it right on the head. Uh, and, and you're right. If, if you can't be strong first and you don't take some of that time for your own self care, uh, you know, first of all, if you have the proclivity of, of thinking of others first and you don't even want to take that time, I don't think you're going to be the type of person that takes too much time. You know, so I, I think you, you are going to be watching that. You aren't going to be the abs absentee boss or father. I think you are going to take just enough time to actually care for yourself enough to then be strong for others. I love the oxygen mask uh, analogy. I love, you know, a chain is as weak as its weakest, as strong as its weakest link. And you, you know, you will be that weak link, that weak link if you don't take care of yourself. And if you can't be strong first for yourself, you can never be strong for others. So yes, we think that's so important to take that time out for self-care. And that's part of what SOAP does. Uh, we named it SOAK, S-O-A-A-K. Obviously, S-O-A-K was taken. <laughs> so the S-O-A-A-K is about immersing yourself and being in sort of a, uh, um, you know, this, this uh, immersion of self-awareness, this immersion of constant and never-ending improvement, you know, the can I principle uh, and, and things like that, that do make you that stronger person so that you can be strong and productive for your family and friends, for your, you know, your relationships, your, your work, your, your workouts, your, you know, whatever you do that helps strengthen yourself. We want to be there to support that in a non-invasive way. We want to be able to be, you know, part of your, your mobile phone. And, and I know there's a whole thing on, you know, radio frequencies and fields and all of that, but with today's technology and, and being able to bring that to something that you have around you anyway, every day, the benefits much outweigh uh, any any problems or risks. So we're we're super excited about this, and uh, and I'm uh, uh, you know I'm I'm very pleased to hear your perspective on it because you're you're right in step with exactly what we do. While while this particular tool um, can be very helpful, of course, there's so many different things you can do. And my suspicion is, well, I'm sure you, you, uh, as the CEO and co-founder of your company, you want to see this adopted to have greater reach and greater impact. Um, the reality is you want people to just be more healthy. Um, you just want people to, to practice more mindfulness and, and to be in a better mental state. And whether that's through your tools or through just other, <clears throat> excuse me, through other mindfulness practices, uh, that's that's really what it all comes down to. And there are so many things that you can do um, to to be able to recenter yourself, to be more present, to be more mindful, and to just foster better self-talk and, and better, um, you know, more positive approaches to to the challenges you face during your day. Uh, one of the things that I've tried to do consistently over time that I find really helps it's just super simple, super easy. It's just a matter of taking deep breaths, like taking the time. People, when people say they don't have time to to practice mindfulness and and um, foster some self care and such, I think. Well, if nothing else, take time for deep breathing. Uh, it literally can be thirty seconds, you know, between meetings. Um, you know, take some time to pause. Take ten deep, slow, deep breaths, uh, and it's amazing just physiologically what that does to you. Um, and how it can make such a huge difference, such a small amount of time. And if, if you have more time, great five, 10 minutes, take periodically throughout the day, take those moments, take that time. It doesn't need to be a ton of time. Um, but when you do those things consistently over time, it makes a dramatic impact on your overall, uh, wellness and well being, And it just allows you to be with people in a different way. Um, There's you'll respond time, like you were saying, it's a cumulative effect. So you take 
two minutes today, you know, two minutes tomorrow, five minutes the next day, maybe you enjoy a 30 minute workout. It's an accumulation. It's at the end of the week. How much of that self-care time did you use on yourself? And just like working out, you know, if I can't get to the gym at least four days a week, I don't feel as good. And even if I go in for 20, 30 minutes, you know, say I set aside 45 minutes, but I only get to go 20 or 30 minutes, that small win for me, celebrating that small win makes all the difference in my whole day. I, I did something that I planned on doing. I ran out of time. I didn't have enough time, but I still showed up, even if it's for that 15, 20 minutes. And I did something. I was active. And you know how action changes the whole body. You know, you, I can stand up right now and smile and do 10 jumping jacks and it will affect the rest of my day. Uh, something you said about breathing, and I'm glad you brought that up. I, I don't know if you have ever listened to uh, Huberman, the Huberman Report and all of that out of, uh, I think he's out of Stanford, uh, one of our our people, uh, I guess, know him. So I, I listened to a couple of things that he has put out and and he t he teaches a breathing technique that you can breathe in and it's a double breath. So you're so you take that extra breath up and then blow out slow and long and hard. If you just do that three times, you know, and we based our whole company on lowering people's stress level. But if you do that just three times in a row, you, they've proven that your stress levels start to go down and you're starting to, you know, and when you're when you're less stressed, you're more energetic, you're more active and you're more productive. So yeah, any little thing, a walk, walk around your house three times. You know, I can't go out, it's cold. I don't care, walk around your house. If you got stairs, go up and down the stairs three or four times. Do something, do something that you can celebrate that small little win that will change the rest of your day physically and mentally. It, it, it all counts, it all helps. Yeah, it does all help. Uh, it it can seem fairly trivial and it, in, uh, just insignificant, and I get it. And and if it seems insignificant, you think you think why even bother? Uh, but cum cumulatively, it really makes a huge difference. Uh, these small little things, and think about it in terms of small little wins that you can have throughout your day, uh, especially when you're dealing with high anxiety situations, high stress situations. Take the time to do some of that deep breathing. Um, uh, take some time to pause, take some time to self-reflect. Uh, you'll find that you'll be more productive. So the, the five, 10 minutes you take is going to pay off in spades in terms of your overall focus and productivity and ability to be present with people as you're focusing on relationships and such, uh, all of which is going to just help you be more effective in what you do as a leader, uh, your technical expertise, you know, innovation, creativity, all of that is going to be vastly improved as you make that a focus. Uh, and so for anyone listening, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I, I know I should work out more. I know I should, you know, meditate. I know I should do this, that, and the other. It can start to feel overwhelming because you just add it to like the long list of all the other things you're supposed to be doing. And then you feel guilty about it. You might feel shame about it. That's not going to help. <laughs> so we're not trying to like shame you into mindfulness practices. Um, but the point is like, start small, start simple. Um, and just, you know, if you need to set an alarm on your phone, you know, for once an hour to take a two minute reflective break, a deep breathing break, go on a quick walk, whatever, like there, you know, anything like that, um, start small, start simple. It can make a real big difference. hundred percent. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm with you on that and it will change your life. And when you get stronger, you'll see the, the people's lives around you get stronger too. There'll, there'll be a certain, uh, coherence in your family, in your workplace, you know, it only takes one. And then you've probably read these studies, but we emit an energy field uh, around us. It's actually measurable now. That's why when somebody walks into a room and if they've got a certain uh, energy level about them, like the whole room either kind of goes down two or three notches, you know, what's up with John, what's up with Fred, or it goes up notches. And that is all based on your perception of what's going on in the moment, who you are, and you can walk into a room and change that room. There's a certain coherence that happens that we don't even see, but now science is measuring that. So if you walk home, walk in home, you know, and your, your wife's probably said, Hey, what's up with you today? Like you're, you know what I mean? Like, like I know something's wrong. I can feel it. I can see it. Uh, and by contrast, you walk into the room and you're, you're just jamming. You're on cloud nine. I'm so excited. You run in, grab her, give her a kiss, do, you know, do whatever. And it's like, it's a totally different thing. You're in control of both of those scenarios, whether you're having a great day or a bad day, 
when you walk in that door to your office or to your home, you can make a difference in both of those places based on what you do, John, 10 seconds before you walk in there. And you've yeah. got the power to do that. It's so easy to say and so hard to do. <laughs> but, yeah. but, if you, but if you have an awareness of it, you, you've set your timer, you've done some little thing to amp up your energy feel and how you are, are perceiving the moment and living in that moment, then when you're strong, you affect everybody around you. You can change the uh, the whole uh, environment, the whole uh, feeling of your office by doing that. You can change the whole feeling of your family by doing that. You can change the feeling of yourself by doing that. And uh, and something that, you know, just for being aware of it, that's not a big ask. Just be aware of it. Be aware of how you walk into a room. Be aware of how you talk to the people you love. Be aware of how you talk to your, your coworkers. If something's bothering you, snap yourself out of it. Tell yourself something. Give yourself a positive affirmation. Repeat it. You know, and, and I used to hear people say, if you say something out loud, it's so good. You know, write it down, say it out loud. I'm thinking, no big deal. I don't have to do that. Well, in many cases, it helps because when you say something, and you hear yourself say that thing, there are no barriers to entry. There are, there's nothing, like if I tell you, man, I really love those glasses, you you immediately say, you know, well, thanks, Henry, but why are you telling me that? What do you need? You know, th there's always some sort of a barrier. But if you look in the mirror and say, John, those are awesome glasses. It's like, you believe it because you said it. So if you walk into it right before you go home and you walk in, you know, you're, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, you're just in your car, and you say, John, you're going to be the most awesome father when you walk in that room. People, the, my family is going to love me. Uh, I'm going to make a difference in their lives. You know, ten seconds, and you you've changed the rest of your evening. So uh, yeah, I'm way into that. And and again, that's what we yes. you know push our entire company on. But I I, uh, I I love I love that, and I love that you recognize that. Yeah. Well, Henry, this has just been a really great conversation. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us a final word on the topic for today. Yeah. So uh, if you are interested in some of the things that John and I have been talking about today, go to Soak and it's S-O-A-A-K dot com. Uh, we, with all of our things, we have free trials so that you're, I never want to push anybody into doing anything they don't want to do, but I promise you, you, you try that for seven days. It, that sets your timer for your day so that you can get these positive, mindful intentions. You can look at the sound frequencies. You can do the 21 day emergency. You get everything, try it out. And, and, you know, I, I really hope it changes your life. Uh, but just, just as a final word and, and to close what we've been talking about, be mindful for yourself first, and then you can be mindful for other people later. When you get yourself strong first, and I'm not talking about an hour workout, I'm talking about 10 seconds before you walk into that room, like, like we were just mentioning, you can change your life and you can change the life yeah. of others. So I, uh, I, I wish everybody the best. Uh, John, I love talking to you. Uh, you 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 fit right into what exactly what we're doing, uh, and I'd love to to continue this relationship. Wonderful, thank you, Henry. It's been a pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Henry and his team can do for you. Check out Soak, and as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. That you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day, and I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.